Hi guys, this is part two of Spiritual Warfare Freedom from Demonic Influence. In this segment, I'm going to be talking about Satan. We're going to go to the Bible and we're going to learn as much as we can about our enemy. Okay? I'm going to begin talking about Satan before the fall. And in a few minutes, I'm going to read the scriptures. But this is what we're going to see. This is the main points that we're going to see in these scriptures. That God uh, created Satan. Satan was created by God. God created him beautiful. He covered him in precious stones. He was full of musical instruments. He sang. Whether he was a worship leader or not, I'm really not sure. The Bible doesn't make that clear. A lot of people do believe that because he had the musical instruments inside of him and because he sang. And I can show you that in Scripture in a few minutes. Um, we'll see that he was perfect in all of his ways. That's how God created him. God created him to be wise. Uh, God named him Lucifer. And in a few minutes, we'll take a look and see what that what the name Lucifer means. Um, he was an anointed cherub angel. Cherubs were actually high-level angels. Okay, we'll see that he was uh, an angel that covered, that was part of his job. And we'll take a little bit. Uh, at a look to see if you know see what we believe that that means that he was a covering angel he worked in the holy height of God and he walked amongst the stones of fire okay now let's take a look at the some of the scriptures that talks about these things okay I'm going to be reading from Ezekiel 28 13 I'm going to be reading from the modern King James Version. Well, actually on this scripture, but on some I think I read from the King James Version. Um, okay, Ezekiel 28, 13, it says, You have been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the turquoise, and the emerald, and gold. The workmanship of your tambourines and of your flutes was prepared in you in the day that you were created. Wow. Satan was beautiful. He was covered in, it just seems like every, you know, every precious stone in gold, he was covered in it. And he had musical instruments on the inside of him. Okay. I want to look at his name now. We're going to look at Isaiah 14, 12. Uh, a and I'm going to read this actually in two different versions of the Bible first the King James and it says How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer son of the morning now I'm going to read it in a different version because it, It's a little bit different his name. They didn't use Lucifer in the modern King James It says how you are fallen from the heavens O shining star Son of the morning. Okay, so it replaced Lucifer with a shining star. I looked up Lucifer in the Strong's Concordance, and uh, its word Hebrew 1984 pronounced, I believe, Hallel, and it means Lucifer means morning star. Okay, and in in other places it talks about his brightness. Okay, I'm going to read now from Job chapter 28, verses 4 and 7. I'm going to read these in the modern King James. Now, this is Yahweh speaking to Job. Verse 4, actually, it's verse 7 that I want you to pay closest attention to. Verse 4 sets up 7. Okay, it says, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell if you have understanding when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now this scripture right here, it says that the, okay, many different places in the Bible, 
when it speaks of stars, it's talking about the angels of God. And from what I read and from what I gathered, it seemed like those that were called stars were a higher level. Maybe they were the cherubs. I'm really the cherubim. I'm really not sh absolutely sure about that. But I know that Satan for sure was a very high level angel. And uh, and it says here when the morning stars sang together. So I believe that they were singing, making music in the in the throne room in the holy of holies in all the sons of god and that leads me to believe maybe a different level of angels uh shouted for joy so maybe the maybe the the, the morning stars maybe those were the higher level and then the the sons of god were were the lower levels i'm not absolutely sure but that's what it leads me to believe and i'll let you decide what you think about that okay let's read ezekiel 28 14 and 15 and it says you were the anointed cherub that covers and i have put you in the holy height of god where you were you have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire you were perfect in your ways and the day from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you Okay, here is where it says that that uh, that Satan, that he was an anointed cherub that covers. I don't know exactly what that means, but I'll tell you what it leads me to believe. It leads me to think about the Ark of the Covenant. On top of the Ark sat the mercy seat. And on top of the mercy seat, there were uh, angels covering the mercy seat. And we know that that is, that symbolic, that's a picture of the true Holy of Holies. And, uh, you know, I'm really not sure. I'm not sure, you know, exactly what it means that he covers. But I do believe that it means for sure that he worked directly in the Holy of Holies. And, uh, and part, I think he had many jobs, different jobs is what it seems like to me, because it says that he walked up and down in the, in the midst of the stones of fire. And I'm not sure what that means either. And I really couldn't find, I did find some stuff, but I couldn't back it up with the word of God. So, um, you know, it was maybe visions that people had and different things, different ideas of what those stones of fire, but because I can't back it up with the word of God, I'm going to just let it lie. I, I, like I say, maybe Maybe some of you have more information, more understanding of what those stones of fire. But I, I am sure that Satan was a very high level, maybe the highest, maybe the highest level of angels before his fall. I'm really not sure. I'm absolutely not sure of that. But, you know, the, the mercy seat, the Bible says that the priest once a year would go in and they would sprinkle the blood upon the mercy seat. So I know that that is, is God himself, his mercy. And uh, so, so, you know, so that leads me to believe for sure that Satan was right there in the holies of holies. Wow. <laughs> and he gave that up. Not smart. Okay. The next section, that the next thing that we're going to talk about is Satan's rebellion and removal from his position. Okay, I'm going to read some scriptures in a few minutes, but first I'm going to give you the main points of what we're going to be looking for in these scriptures. Okay, iniquity was found in him. Satan made five I statements. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He wanted to be he wanted to be the top. He wanted to rise above God. He wanted to be the head of all those other angels. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay. So that was his pride in his heart. He wanted to rise above God. Okay, Satan led a rebellion in heaven. He merchandised his goods. I'm going to take a little bit more. We're going to take a little bit more of a look at what that meant. He merchandised his goods. 
Uh, because of his beauty and his brightness, he led this rebellion. He spoiled his wisdom. He profaned the holy place. There was war in heaven. He was Satan was cast down to the ground, and he lost his place in heaven. Okay, let's read the scriptures. Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 17, it says, How you are fallen from the heavens, O shining star, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will go up to the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also set in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will go up above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Those who see you shall stare and closely watch you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth to tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house for his prisoners? So one day everyone's going to see what Satan looks like. They're going to see that he's really, he's nothing. He's, re he's really just not. And one day we're all going to see that, clearly. Okay, let's look at Ezekiel twenty-eight sixteen through 18. It says, By the multitude of your goods they have filled your midst with violence, and you have sinned. So I cast you profane from the height of God, the height of God, and I destroy you, O covering cherub, from among the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have spoiled your wisdom because of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will put you before kings that, that they may behold you by the host of your iniquities. By the iniquity of your trade, you have profaned your holy place. So I brought a fire from your midst. It shall devour you. And I will give you for ashes on the earth before the eyes of all who see you. You know what that that makes me think of? So I brought a fire from your midst. You know what it sounds like to me? And, and it goes on to say it shall devour you. It sounds like to me that the, that the very fire that Satan uses to destroy so many people and nations, cities, that God's going to use that his own fire to destroy him. I want to look back up too at verse number 16. And it says, by the multitude of your goods. Now, I looked this up in a lot of different versions because I wanted to get a grip on what this was saying. And different versions said goods. Well, this one says goods. Trade, trading, traffic, merchandise. We know Satan wasn't going around selling vacuum cleaners or shoes. <laughs> so we know that he was merchandising something. He was trafficking. He was peddling. <laughs> and we know that what that was, was discontentment. He was peddling his rebellion and his discontentment. And he was, he was leading a rebellion. He was turning the angels against God. He was a traitor. Okay, let's read Revelation 12, verses 3 and 4a. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. This, is, this scripture right here is the one that makes people believe that it was one-third, one-third of the angels, or the stars, that fell with Satan. This is this is where that that belief in the Christ in Christendom comes from, right here is in the scripture. Okay, Revelation twelve seven and nine, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found in any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so right there verifies the fact i believe i believe that it does verify the, the scripture before it that yes, that the stars represents angels, the, the angels that were cast out with him, and it being one-third. Okay, 
My ne the next thing I want to take a look at is Satan locked away at the end of this age. We're going to look at these scriptures and the main points. Okay, here are the main points. He, uh, Satan is cast into hell at the end of this age. The people in hell will be amazed that Satan is as weak as they are and is receiving the same judgment that they have received. Okay? His, his heavenly music, the music that he made in heaven, had become nothing but noise. Okay? He will be covered in hell with maggots. He will be bound in hell for 1,000 years. Okay, I'm going to read now Isaiah 14, 9 through 11. And it says, Hell from below is moved for you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all the he goats of the earth. It has raised from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All of them shall speak and say to you, Are you also as weak as we? Are you like us? Your pride is brought down to the grave, and the noise of your harps. The maggot is spread under you, and the worm covers you. All right, let's read Revelation 20, 1 through 3. And it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And he cast him into the abyss and shut, shut up and set a seal on him, that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little time. Okay, the next section, Satan's final rebellion and end. The scriptures tell us what's going to happen to him. And here's the main points. Satan will be loosed at the end of the 1,000 years. He will lead one final rebellion. He will receive, he will deceive, sorry. He will deceive many once again, as many as the sand of the sea, the Bible says. They will surround the saints and the holy city. Fire will come out of heaven and devour them all. He will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. He will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, let's read Revelation 20 verses 7 through 10. And when the thousand years had expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison, and he will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for battle. The number of them is as the sand of the sea, and they went up over the breadth of the earth and circled around the camp of the saints and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them, and the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet were, and he will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Praise the Lord. That's good to know, isn't it? His time is short. He knows his time is short, and that's why he's raging wildly. Okay. Now, quickly, I want to look. I want us to look at the names, uh, Satan's names, that are provided for us in the Bible, and the meaning of them. Now, I've only provided uh, one scripture reference for each name. Uh, some of the some of these names are used many times throughout the Bible, and the the actual the names may change from version to version. I'm using the modern King James Version of the Bible. Okay, let's look at its proper names first. Abaddon, found in Revelation 9-11, means the destroyer. Apollyon, also in Revelation 9-11, also means a destroyer. Beelzebub, found in Matthew 10-2, 10, means Lord of the Flies or Dung God. That's funny. <laughs> okay, Belial, 2 Corinthians 6, 15, means wicked and worthless. Satan, found in Matthew 4, 10, means contrary, adversary, enemy, accuser. This is the most commonly uh, used name for him in the Bible. Okay, now I'm going to look at some descriptive names that give insight into Satan's power. Uh, Angel of the Abyss, found in Revelation 9-11, uh, 
It means abyss, the boat of evil spirits, hell. So he's the angel of hell. The prince of demons found in Mark 3.22. It means uh, ruler or the first in rank of power, prince. The prince of power of the air, Ephesians 2.2. 2. It means ruler of the demons. So that's, that's who he is. God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. It may, he's a false god, an idol, ruler. He is God of those that are of this world and its systems. Okay, now I'm going to look, we're going to look at other descriptive names that's found in the Bible. Okay, Serp, the serpent, 2 Corinthians 11, 3. Uh, a subtle, sly, or treacherous person. Dragon, found in Revelation 12, 9, it brings to mind a vicious, wicked animal. The accuser of the brothers or the brethren, found in Revelation 12, 10, Satan accuses God's people of wrongdoing in order to try to disqualify us, not only as God's children, but also as ones having dominion under God's leadership. He cannot because Jesus has paid our sin debt. Okay, another one, descriptive name as the Antichrist, 1 John 4, 3, and it means he, he works to turn people's minds and hearts away from Christ through lies, false teaching, and persecution. He is against Christ, and we know that. He hates, he hates Christ. Okay, the enemy found in 1 Peter 5, 8, one who feels hatred towards intends injury to or opposes the interests of another a foe, a hostile power or force. He's a liar, found in John 8, 44, someone who lies repeatedly. He's the father of lies, John 8, 40, uh, John 8 44. He's the one behind all lies, every lie. The lawless one, found in 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 through 9, the one who is unruly or uh, unrestrained by law, rebellious, no scruples. He's a murderer, found in John 8, 4. He has killed and he has no value of life. He's behind all murder. He is the tempter, Matthew 4, 3, the one who entices someone to do wrong. Satan tempts, hoping to bring about our or someone else's demise. He wants all of us to sin. He tempts us to sin because he knows that that's how he can get us in chains. Okay, he's the thief, John 10.10. 10. One who steals repeatedly. Satan desires to steal everything good from us, and he certainly will. If, if, if he can lead you into sin, he is able to steal your joy, your peace, your finances. He's able to steal your health and every single good thing that God wants us to have. He will steal it. Okay, the evil one, found in Matthew 5.37, angry, atrocious, bad, beastly, corrupt, damnable, depraved, destructive, disastrous, foul, harmful, hateful, heinous, hideous, iniquitous, injurious, loathsome, low, malicious, no good, obscene, offensive, poison, reprobate, repulsive, re revolting, rotten, sinful, spiteful, stinking, ugly, unpleasant, vicious, vile, villainous, wicked, wrathful, and wrong. Every bad thing. That's what he is. Every evil thing. Okay, guys, in concluding, I want to read one more scripture. And it is found in Ephesians 5, 11, and it says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove means to rebuke, resist, and expose them. Guys, a lot of people think that when we talk about the devil that we're glorifying him, and that's a lie. What we're doing is exposing him, and I can guarantee you that he does not like us to talk about him in this way and to expose who he is. He absolutely hates it. But guys... If it's evil, it's of the devil. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And everything is good is of the Lord. So receive the good things that God has. But reject and resist evil. 
that's all I have for today. God bless you guys. I love you. Bye-bye.